Hello, my name is Stuart Wheeler, and I'll be presenting a video performance of my composition, Mr. Bernard Shaw. Prior to the performance, I wanted to take just a couple of minutes to discuss some of the aspects of this composition that were important or interesting to me in making it. Uh, so the composition is a song for multiple voices, and it's a musical setting of a poem that I composed using a source text from this book on vivisection, which is sort of a strange hagiography of the English playwright George Bernard Shaw, uh, primarily focusing on his political opposition to the practice of vivisection in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Uh, the methods that I used for constructing the text are um, drawing heavily from some of the acrostic and writing through methods developed by the composer and poet Jackson Mac Lowe. Uh, so there are specific methods of selection and rearrangement of words in the text. Um, and these methods are both non-intentional and completely predetermined. In other words, uh, I'm making no intentional decisions on the granular level. Uh, I'm simply developing um, my own system for selecting and rearranging words from the source text. Uh, and once that's been determined, uh, the result is a foregone conclusion. So I'm simply going through and uh, uh, performing the operation of the patterns that I've constructed for myself. Um, another aspect of the piece that is important to me is the tuning of it. Uh, so the piece is built around one single chord, which it, uh, forms uh, essentially the harmonic architecture for the piece. And the different voices move through different contrapuntal patterns throughout that architecture. Um, the chord itself is constructed based off of very specific frequency relationships that um, use the, the prime numbers 3 and 7, uh, which create uh, very specific um, intervals within a just intonational framework. And uh, for those who are unfamiliar with what exactly that means, um, these pitches, uh, the particular harmonies that you'll hear in the piece may sound somewhat similar to the kind of tuning that you might hear on a piano, for example, um, but uh, with some slight differences. Um, uh, essentially, uh, the intervals, uh, some of them will be wider, some of them will be slightly narrower in, in kind of specific uh, relationships to create um, very specific types of harmonies that I'm interested in hearing. Uh, as far as the individual voices and how they move through that harmonic space, uh, the mapping of their movement is similar to the patterns of the text selection and rearrangement in that uh, this is also based around non-intentional and predetermined patterns that I've developed. And in fact, the, the, the pitches that the voices sing are based on a system that I've designed which is tied to the same system of text selection and rearrangement. In other words, it's a redundant system. So uh, as an example, every word that starts on an A will also be sung on a very specific pitch, and that specific pitch is, uh, is a, um, a kind of like a B-flat, uh, which is uh, below a C by a specific, the specific ratio of seven against eight. Um, uh, there are some exceptions to that, and those exceptions are also very specific, uh, which I'll talk about in a moment. Uh, but essentially what ends up happening is that the text itself generates the music, uh, in a sense. And this is, um, this is a bit similar to uh, pieces like Litany for the Whale by John Cage, where uh, the piece could be essentially described as a poem 
uh, which uh, which generates pitches based off of the content of the poem. And I'm interested in this as a way of sort of like um, translation between text and sound. Uh, um, so uh, the last thing that I wanted to talk about is that um, despite the sort of rigidity of this of the structure that I'm describing, um, uh, there's one additional aspect of um, a concept of sort of positive and negative notes in the piece. So uh, the vast majority of the pitches given to the singers are are positive notes. In other words, they're kind of what you would typically think of when reading music in that a note is given and that is the note that should be sung or played. Um, a certain handful of the pitches which come up at regular intervals also based off of uh, certain specific rules that I have decided in relationship to the text. Uh, certain of these notes are negative notes um, and what this means is essentially uh, a, a kind of opposite of typical notes in that a note is given and um, any note may be sung or played other than that note given. Any note at all. Uh, not within the framework, simply any note uh, of any kind. So what this ends up doing is uh, creating a, a very consistent and kind of rigid uh, structure that moves in um, uh, different kinds of patterns, but ones that are not fully predictable. Um, but then there's also certain elements of, of chaos and free choice that, that um, work their way into the system, and the system sort of accepts within itself. Um, so uh, those are kind of the, uh, um, like the theoretical ideas that, that were interesting to me in making the piece. Um, uh, and um, uh, aesthetically, I'm mostly kind of like interested in the specific kinds of tuning and harmonies that uh, I'm getting to hear in this piece. And um, also in just the sort of like free interplay of different simple patterns uh, that are repetitive, um, but kind of like juxtaposing against each other in, in unpredictable ways. So there's, there's kind of like, um, very few major dramatic shifts in the piece, uh, and yet on the surface level, uh, it's highly unpredictable um, as far as what's going to happen on a detailed level from one moment to the next. Okay, um, I'm going to wrap it up with that and uh, go into the performance. Thanks. On resolution evening, our lady was English. Do Annie's national day evening? The high call annual live national and nation death as English nation resolution evening. Do speech and Neither denounce national English and neither repairs affections of section society and neither nation scientific names as a nation scientific English national effects death as resolution either speech Society suggests a session centralized. 19 speech says was made. Section secretary, secretary, national majorly is not administered. Remember animals now. Says society as national says society doctors says graphs not. Meetings, records, anti vivisection hundred spoke, savage, experimental, retort, a 
equal Specialized resolution education rather educated scientific experimental nation section ray collector experiments experimental desire and equal section medium educated not subject subject education size Promised a scale, experiment, education, science, experiment, experiment, science, shiny, experiment, brother, speech, organic, experiment, experiments, necessary, experiment, error. Resolution experiments asking to experiments nineteen and TV section something not has not seen to chase subjects emotion remember experiments support Retorted experiment to say, just Society says the fact retort emotions should says education is not sad experiments fishing not study experiments experiment do studies studies expressions doctor says resolution sorry succeed Experiment, 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 resolution, equal, death, second, experiment, best, not, shockers, rockers, nuts, sexual experiments, national, suffering, shockers, suffering, shockers, not, suckers, shockers, experiments, authority, experiments, national, suckers, Experiments not so stage experiments experiment denounced experiment retort not special audience experiments either doctors now specials subject evening National experiments, national speech, Not 
Shut versions, fairs, sex and hard, strongly, not, should, sex experiments, retards, much, experiment, not, strongly, strong, experiments, collector, educated, experiments, not, sorry, sex experiments, educations, experiment, not, sure. Society, annual resolution, should resolution admit next experiments, experiments, resolutions, seed experiments, expressions, not seeds. Ciao e buongiorno a tutti! My name is Bianca and I am a PhD student of Ethnomusicology at Wesleyan University in Middletown, Connecticut. First and foremost, before I begin, I would just like to thank you for taking a moment to watch this video presentation of Una Storia Italiana. After completing a performance workshop in Hungary in the summer of 2018, I also decided to make arrangements to return to La Patria the homeland, Italy, to stay with my relatives and to catch up on the lost time. 
I still couldn't believe how much time had flown by since my last visit, which was about four years ago, during which I was actually in the study abroad program up north in Milan, training as a classical vocalist. So I was just really excited to catch up and especially just to see how much my little cousins have grown. Following my arrival in Rome from Budapest, I made the usual route to Roma Termini, which is the train station, via taxi, just trying to take advantage of the approximate 30 minute drive to gather my thoughts while I anxiously await the upcoming two hour train ride down south to the birthplace of my paternal grandfather in the beautiful coastal town called Minturno, which is in La Provincia di Latina. After chatting with the taxi driver for a bit, just trying to make some small talk and honestly just to freshen up on the language for a bit, I then decided to take some time to myself. So I was kind of peering out the window, comparing my current landscape with my memories of my last visit. And all while this was happening, the radio was just serenading me with the country's latest music, such as the song Italiana, which was featured in the opening of this video and will actually serve as a mini case study for this presentation. Since the single's release in May of 2018, Italiana by the artists Fedez and JX became an immediate success and is considered Italy's top summer hit of 2018. So by the time I arrived in July of that same year, the song instantly became an integral part of my local surroundings. I mean, if I wasn't already listening to the song on my own, I would surely hear it in passing, whether it be on the radio or in a retail store, a local bar, or even just watching MTV with my cousins. The song is best summarized by the M&B music blog, which describes the song Italiana as, quote, a portrait of contemporary Italy in which the strengths and weaknesses of our beautiful country meet and collide. From the cuisine, the Mediterranean beauty, the good humor, and the friendliness, Italy is that wonderful and unique place that make you forget even your worst of flaws. And the two artists want to tell an Italian story where the power of music makes you overcome any difficulty. In an Instagram post announcing the song's release date, Fede states, A mezzanotte uscirà il nostro ultimo singolo insieme. Quello che doveva essere un progetto per sfagarci e prendersi un pausa delle rispettive carriere soliste si è trasformato in astronave che ci ha portato qua, dove nessun artista con nostro background era mai arrivato prima. È stata un'avventura pazzesca, un'esperienza che ci ha cambiato la vita e che ha segnato la colonna sonora delle ultime tre estati. Come ogni cosa, anche questa saga sta raggiungendo il termine. Jax e Fedez, dal quartiere allo stadio. Questa è la storia che abbiamo raccontato, una storia di lavoro, di divertimento e di amicizia, una storia italiana. Our latest single together will be released at midnight. What was supposed to be a project to relax and to take time out of our respective solo careers has transformed into a spaceship that has brought us here where no artist of our background has ever been before. It was a crazy adventure, an experience that has changed our lives and has marked the soundtrack for the last three summers. But like everything, this saga is also coming to an end. JX and Fedez, from the neighborhood to the stadium. This is a story that we told, a story of work, of fun and of friendship. An Italian story. This Instagram post not only serves as a way to advertise the new single, but also plays a direct role in shaping the listener's engagement and overall musical experience, such as the artist's choice of images to use to pair with said post and even their use of language, such as the use of semantics. So, for example, as you can see, the quotes around the word Italiana holds basically a double meaning that serves not only as the obvious reference to the song title, but also as a form of irony or even sarcasm. Therefore, Italiana's lyrical complexity and rhyme scheme, coupled with its fast yet steady rhythmic flow, 
serves as only just a slice of Italian rap and hip hop's common musical aesthetics. This should come as no surprise given the country's approximate 50 year relationship with the acculturation of rap and hip hop. According to music scholar Tony Mitchell, quote, Italian Pussy has passed quickly through an initial phase of imitating outside models and moved into an acculturation of rap which has created its own distinctive and diverse musical culture completely within its own boasts, taunts, tensions, and ideological conflicts, often through the use of regional dialects, local popular folkloric traditions, and Italian peasant songs and dance. Italiana's chorus serves actually as a double entendre to highlight the tourism and popularity and beauty of the Italian summer while also revealing the cracks within this often romanticized portrayal of the country. So although there are references to the summer weather, the Italian beachside, the beautiful people, there also lies this double meaning or this added layer which serves as a political critique against the country's current immigration policy as well as the treatment towards undocumented citizens. Therefore, the line which reads, Se vieni dal mare ti stiamo aspettando con l'acqua la gola, refers to the mass of people seeking asylum who have tried to come over to the country by boat, or as the song references, by swimming. Other examples can be seen throughout the music video, which ironically was filmed entirely in Los Angeles, California. Now, given the song's references to current Italian pop culture and international politics, along with the song's upbeat rhythm and satirical depictions of the country's cultural stereotypes, such as the use of hand gestures, the love of pizza and spaghetti, as well as the culture's attitude of non ti preoccupare or a laid back type of behavior or mindset. The song Italiana's musical style, lyrical content, and music video ultimately exemplifies the complexity of the Italian culture and its identity on a local, national, and international scale. According to Italian studies scholar Graziella Parati, quote, in considering Italian culture as an intrinsically complex web of encounters, we need to think of the national itself as a border and a place that can give birth to global citizenship. Thinking about the local without losing sight of the global allows us to ethically contrast narratives that enclose rather than connect contexts of knowledge beyond rather limited spheres." End quote. After finally arriving in Minturno, I was warmly greeted by my cousins at the train station. Now just from the drive from the train station to their home, it was pretty wild to see this relationship or this toss up back and forth between the sense of familiarity of the landscape and the surrounding sounds versus some of the changes and alterations that have happened since my last visit about four years ago. It was pretty apparent even in terms of the level of diversity, specifically racial diversity, that had increased within this small little town. So, for example, it's a pretty common practice for my family and I, especially since uh, they live right off the coast, to go to the beach a lot. And when we went to the beach this time, versus, I should say, four years ago, I should preface, there's definitely an increase of people from other countries, specifically from countries in Africa, such as Tunisia, who were selling jewelry, offering to braid hair. There were people that were on the street corners offering to wash your car windshields. And this honestly shouldn't come as any surprise, just because given the latest immigration report that was conducted, I believe in 2019, within the last 10 years alone, Italy's immigration levels have actually quadrupled making it the third largest migrant population in all of Europe. Three million foreign citizens that legally reside in the country of Italy, which is nearly 9% of the overall population. So,
clearly with these visual changes and the racial makeup, the soundscape, etc., um, since my last visit has also created some racial tensions as well as opened up dialogues to talk about the idea of what it means to be, or I should say to question um, representation in these stereotypical tropes of what does it mean or to be Italian. So during my stay, that was actually an opportunity for my relatives and I to have these type of discussions. And even in terms of changes of um, rise of technology. So for example, when I was last there, my family was still using dial-up and either didn't have any cell phones or maybe had a flip phone. And now when I returned, um, I had access to Wi-Fi and my cousins even had smartphones. They use Instagram, uh, WhatsApp, Facebook. So it was definitely, it's definitely a completely different scenario now, especially in terms of being able to communicate more instantly um, overseas. So these are just some examples and some observations that I would like to share, as well as reflect some of the points that are being made in Fedez and JX's single Italiana. Now, although this case study was very brief and honestly just barely even scratched the surface of some of these broader sociocultural issues, I highly encourage you to check out the song's lyrics, um, which are provided in the end of this video, along with their rough English translations, as well as to check out the song Italiana's music video on their YouTube page in the link provided. So thank you once again and grazie mille. Ciao.